as you get as old as I am, you kind of get set in your ways, and, and awesome, it's not very awesome. You know, you, you, you've seen everything. But people, I'm telling you tonight, this is awesome. Thank you. I'd like to, to finish, I would like to paraphrase a quote from a great sports philosopher, Rocky Balboa. <laughs> Except for the birth of my children and grandchildren, this is the greatest thing that happened to me in the history of my life. Yo, Claire, I mean. But this means a great deal to me, uh, and I'm very happy with it. Uh, I get emotional, but for some reason I got through it. But let me tell you why it's important. I can see what I'm dead and going, going. I can see my kids jumping in my son's motorhome and saying, hey guys, let's, let's go into Fairmont for a while. First thing they would do is come into Lupo's hot place and have a hot dog, four or five probably, and drink a beer. Then they'd get in the van and they'd drive on up here. And they'll come on up, up the Redden's Arena and they come up on the third floor. And they'll look at that plaque. And they'll say, that's my dad. That's my dad. Thank you very much. In 33 years of teaching and coaching, I've been interviewed many times by students on the student paper. And inadvertently, they always ask, why did you choose teaching as a career? And to be honest with you, in my younger days, I was a little leery. I had a hard time answering that. Because to be honest, a lot of the reason I chose teaching was because of athletics. And I wasn't real sure how the academic side of uh, the school would look at that. So I refrained from giving that answer. But now, after the 33 years, and I've had a little more time to think about it, I think I finally come to the conclusion that the reason I chose teaching is because I wanted to make a difference in young people's lives. And I've been very, very fortunate to teach and, and coach many, many successful people now in their adult life. Many, many people in the medical field that are now doctors, uh, nurses, pharmacists, uh, many lawyers, business people. I've even coached, uh, or coached and taught uh, a big-time football coach and a big-time athletic director and a big-time sports writer. I've also coached many Joe the Plumbers as well. <laughs> but if I had made any difference in any of these people's lives, that is it's a great honor to me. But if I've been able to make a difference, it's because that Jack McIntyre, Harold S. Deacon Call, and Fairmont State University made a difference for me. Thank you very much. High school and I was scared to death. Coach Redden gave me the opportunity to come here and play and I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't sure if I could make it or not and uh, he did give me that opportunity and I wanted to come here. The great tradition to play for a legendary coach, there's no question. I grew up in Buckingham, West Virginia and I heard all those stories and I wanted to be a part of it. Coach gave me that chance. Now, I will tell you this real quick. Coach did this. When I got here, he still reminds me today. He said, listen, you were the last guy I took that year. And he said, it came down between you and one other guy. Coach always tells me that, and he can't deny that tonight. He said, it was you and one other guy. And I'm not sure if one day he sat in his office and he flipped the coin and said, you won. And Tim Murphy gets to come to Fairmont State. But Coach, whatever the reason is, I sure am glad you chose me. Coach Redden is still a huge part of our program. He was at practice yesterday. He was talking to me today at dinner. He said, they're dribbling too much. They got to pass it a little bit more. <laughs> I remember that first day, and yesterday when we drove down, we took the exact same way, coming down, uh, crossing the border at uh, Gananoque in New York State, and crossing New York State from east to west, coming down Pennsylvania. And we took that same road in 1978. And like uh, Dave shared earlier, my dad was there, he provided the wheels, provided some 
comfort, he provided some financial means. Uh, my wife, Toby Chantal, who is here tonight, she was also there, and my uncle was there. And you probably wonder why an uncle and all that. Well, he was the only one who could speak English then. <laughs> So as we drove in Fairmont, we spent the night at a hotel here, and the next day we meet uh, Dave Ritchie in his office, and as we visit the campus, he was looking at me and he was really wondering if I was not tempted inside to just get back in the car and go home. But I stayed, and I stayed, and it was three and a half wonderful years.